So we'll begin by opening the light box, going to our tools and grabbing a polysphere. We're going to use the polysphere because it's basically going to be a ball of clay. I'm going to change it to the basic material too. It's just a very simple piece of polygon geometry that we can use as our first basic building block. And we're going to go to the geometry menu and then just leave the Dynamesh resolution at default, select it and click no on the pop-up. Now you can see that it rebuilds that into a Dynamesh, it's slightly more um, dense resolution, but not too much. Now using the move brush, I'm just going to shape this into the, into the, the form of a rib cage. And we're going to begin from the center of the figure and work our way out. So we start out by creating the rib cage volume, which is essentially uh, an egg form with the uh, thoracic arch carved out here using the standard brush. And then from the side view, I'm just going to make sure that we get the, the right orientation of the rib cage because it's, uh, it does sit on a bit of an angle. And for this creature, I'm actually accentuating that angle a little bit more, carving away the, uh, the area where the spinal column would go because there is a convex portion to the back of the, or concave portion to the back of the rib cage. I'm not putting in individual ribs or any, you know, degree of detail. We're really just going from the major forms and the gesture of the shape. We want to get the shape locked in and that's, that's all. I'll suggest a few ribs here, but I'm not actually sculpting each rib in. There we go. Now I'm going to go to the brush menu and select the insert sphere brush and we'll click and drag draw a sphere into the Dynamesh. And this is basically adding another ball of clay. It's adding another sphere which will then blend in with the other volumes once we execute another Dynamesh. So I'm just using the transpose or the move brush to, to create the midsection here out of this other sphere. And you're really just treating this like another ball of clay that we're adding to the mix. So just using the move brush, we're shaping this. And I'm inverting the mask now so I can actually use the transpose rotate tool to adjust the, the uh, positioning between the, the waist and the rib cage. And once I'm happy with, with how everything's lined up, all I need to do is actually I'm just going to bring this out a little bit here to accommodate the pelvis. You clear the mask and then control click and drag a second time and that executes the Dynamesh. So you clear the mask first with control click and drag and then control click and drag again and that executes a Dynamesh and actually creates our uh, our Dynamesh volume. It takes the rib cage and the waist and then merges them together into a single model. And that's how we're going to do this entire process. We're going to add pieces of clay or add parts, position them, shape them, then we're going to Dynamesh them together so we end up creating a single volume out of the aggregate pieces. Uh, that's the process of Dynamesh, is building up shapes and building up the volume as you need it, updating the volume as you work. So here you can see we've got the, the waist, and we're going to add the pelvis now. Using the mesh insert brush, I'm going to add two spheres, which serve as the buttocks from the back. And then from the front, and it added two spheres because I had X symmetry turned on. Uh, if I had X symmetry turned off, it would only add one sphere, or if I added right at the center line. So I'm going to create kind of a, a horned sort of pelvis here. I want to create a really interesting pelvis shape where the bones of the pelvis wing out in these sort of spiked forms. And you can see as I'm stretching the, two, the, um, the geometry, it's kinking. It's really pushing beyond the limits of the resolution of the sphere. But you'll notice once we're done and we dynamesh this, it's going to rebuild this so those facets aren't there anymore. It becomes a nice, a nice smooth volume, a nice smooth surface. So I'm just using the move brush to shift these shapes around. Now I'll clear the mask with control click and drag. Actually not quite yet. I'm going to change this. Now clear the mask and then control click and drag a second time to execute the Dynamesh. And you can see that it rebuilds this area so I no longer have the problems with the polygon faceting where it was stretched. I'll suggest the, the navel there. And, and just using the standard brush I'm just going to suggest the abdominal forms 
just sketching in the different the divisions between the abdominal muscles. And since I know this is going to be an insectoid character, I might make the body segmented here. I haven't quite decided how I'm going to approach that portion of the body just yet. So I'm just going to make a few more adjustments to the form of the torso using the, the move brush now that I've got the abdomen and the pelvis in place. I'll mask out these points so I don't affect them with the move brush as I'm working near them. This way I can correct the lower back and the gesture of the what will be the spine. Now I'll go back to the mesh insert brush, or the insert sphere brush, and I'll insert two spheres for the shoulders. And from the front I'll pull them into the shape of the, uh, of the clavicles, and from the back I'll shape them into the form of the scapulas. So basically I'm getting the whole shoulder girdle out of this single sphere. By building up the figure like this, in this modular fashion, we're able to, to make sure that the parts intersect and interrelate to each other accurately, uh, just like we were building it out of uh, you know, individual pieces in the real world as a, as, as a clay model. So instead of having to go in and, and just sculpt the scapulas from nothing, we're able to actually lay the scapulas on top of the rib cage as you see here. And it's a, a very cool way of working because it, it helps you build up accurate volumes and accurate um, anatomy really quickly. And we don't have to be um, you know, completely representational here. We're just trying to suggest the, cl the collarbones. We don't have to go and sculpt a lot of detail in them yet. And we'll dynamesh those together. You can see how that corrected all the, the little faceted pieces where the geometry was getting stretched and it merged it all together into a single volume. Now I'll go back to the insert sphere brush, and I'll insert a sphere for the neck. And then using the move brush, I'll stretch it and position it. and we'll add another sphere now for the head. And as we add spheres, you'll see that it masks the previous sphere. So each time you add a new mesh insert, it'll mask the previous ones. And that allows you to manipulate the most recent addition. So I'm going to shape this into kind of an insectoid head, and I know that this character is going to, to feature a head that's got um, a repetitive structure to it. So I'm going to create the first segment of the head, and then we'll duplicate that and, and shift it further back and create the entire head by duplicating one instance. So we're making sort of the uh, insectoid ant kind of head here. I'm going to suggest some mandibles. And we're going to suggest where the eye sockets are going to be. I'm just thinking about sort of ant and other insects and how their heads are shaped. I don't want to get into too much detail here. I'm just trying to get the general shape of the head to begin with. There we 
we go. Now I've dynameshed that, and you can see that it's corrected all those areas that were really stretched in the mandibles. Now it's created an entirely new underlying base mesh, where it's blended all these parts together, and it's corrected any areas where the geometry was just stretched beyond its limits. Do a little bit more shaping to this eye area. And we'll save our work. I'm not going to worry about sculpting eyelids yet because I know that. Um, I'm going to use eyelids that I'm going to mesh insert from another head. So I don't have to worry about that because we're going to use human eyelids, but we're actually going to pull those out of a different model. Right now I'm going into uh, turn off build up mode on my clay brush because I don't want to use the clay build up brush. That just means that when build up is turned on, the clay brush adds volume uh, much faster than it does if you turn off build up. It's a bit more subtle of a brush. All right, we're about ready now to start duplicating the head and uh, and transposing it back and creating the full shape of the head. And we'll do this by going to the subtool menu, and I'm going to clone that subtool, making a copy of it. I'm going to go to the insert, or excuse me, I'm going to go to the uh, selection lasso, and I'm going to lasso select just this head. Go to the geometry, and then I will. Cl uh, Turn on, turn, click delete hidden, and that deletes the body. And then you click close holes, and it'll close the holes. So basically, what I've just done is I've duplicated the body, deleted the body geometry, and leaving the head, and I've filled the holes. Now, if I go back to the body, go to my insert nose brush. Now, you'll notice if I go to the brush menu here and then scroll down to the modifiers, there's a tool menu button. If I click that, I can select any tool to then insert with the brush. So I've selected that head subtool. Now, when I click and drag, instead of adding uh, a nose, it's now adding the insect head. So I'm going to use uh, transpose to position this. And we'll scale this up. And then just using the move, sh move brush to shift these shapes around, just so these two heads are lining up in an interesting way. What I'm trying to go for here is I want there to be a repetitive um, logarithmic uh, reduction of the heads as they as they go back, or the segments, <coughs> the segments as they go back towards the back of the head. So I will hold down Control and click and drag the center line here of the transpose line, and that's going to duplicate that insertion. So basically, what I'm going to do is, each time I've positioned one of these head segments, I'll hold down Control, click and drag the center circle, that's the middle circle there, of the transpose line to duplicate whatever part that I'm working on. So that's just a little trick to quickly duplicate and shift an object inside of ZBrush. And it's only going to work on something that's either a Dynamesh or has only one subdivision level. I just want to reposition these parts. I'm just going to rotate them up just slightly. And 
using the move brush I'll continue to adjust these shapes. So I want to go in here now and, and stretch the head and neck because I feel like it's a little too stumpy. So I'm going to mask out the body and then use the transpose line to stretch the head and neck up. I'm trying to give a more elegant line there, a bit more sense of grace there in the, the flow from the head down into the neck and the torso. You can already see what a vast improvement that makes. Now I'll mask out the neck now and just using the transpose line to rotate the head. There we go. I'm just basically making a few very minor edits to the shape of the eye socket area in preparation for inserting another piece of geometry here. I'm going to use the mesh insert brush for the head, the head insert brush. And I'm going to click and drag and what this does is it draws a head, it inserts a head into my current mesh. But all I'm concerned with is the eye area because I want to give this character sort of human uh, eyelids or human eye form is down inside that uh, insectoid head carapace. So I'm just using the transpose lines to position these heads. And I just want to get that eye geometry, that eye that you see right there, I want to get that centered inside that, um, uh, that eye socket area. I'm going to scale it up and then move it, countersink it down into the head. And we're going to get rid of everything but the eye area. I'm just using the uh, the uh, standard brush here, or the, yeah, I'm just going to push carve everything back into the head that's uh, not needed. And using the move brush to shift those eyes around. Just make sure that all the parts of the head that we're not using have been pushed inside of the DynaMesh. That way they won't be uh, incorporated in once we blend, once we DynaMesh the parts together. Anything that's sitting on the inside will just be deleted. And I'm going to rotate that eye a little bit. It's trying to get a, a good orientation for this eye form. I'm going to widen that eye a little bit. Right. I'm just going to experiment with scaling it down a touch using transpose scale. And that's not working for me, so I'm going to scale it up to enlarge it a bit more. And 
Now I'm going to use that trick I used before with control clicking and dragging to duplicate that inserted head. You can see it masked the previous one now. And I'll scale down the new one and use the same process just to position it so the eye, the fleshy human eye, is visible in that socket in the insect head. And I'll scale it down just a little bit. Each segment scales down just slightly compared to the, the previous one. And control click and drag to duplicate again and repeat. and control click and drag again. Now once we're happy, we'll clear the mask and then DynaMesh, and you'll notice it loses a considerable amount of detail. So what I'll do is I'll come over to the Geometry menu, and I'll raise my DynaMesh resolution. I'm going to turn that slider up. So let's undo, and then we will DynaMesh again. Raise that slider, and then DynaMesh, and you'll see it will retain far more of the detail in that eyelid area. It's going to take a little bit longer now, too, because it's, com it's, um, it's having to process more geometry. But the underlying mesh is not uh, so dense that we can't continue to work in a very efficient manner. It's just giving us enough geometry to hang on to those sharp edges in the eyelids and give us the, the, the form there that we want to retain from those inserted heads. So basically, we were just able to take the insert head brush and use just the eye area to create these human eyelid forms in each of these head segments. And then we'll sculpt further detail onto that later. It's, uh, it's given us the rough shape for now, so we can continue working on the character. Now at this stage I want to add arms onto the character, and I'm going to do that by using some generic arms off one of the human figures that's available in the light box. We'll just use those arms in conjunction with one of the mesh insert brushes. So first I'll go to the light box, go to the tools, and I'll scroll over to the super average man. I'll select him, close the light box, now we're just going to hide everything but the arm. So I'm just going to use a show marquee, or visibility marquee or lasso to make the arm the only thing visible. And under the geometry menu I'll click delete hidden. So now I only have the arm. And I'll return to the character sculpt and I'll select one of the insert brushes. I'll go to, uh, let's say, um, the one I used for the head. And I'll go to the tool palette there under the brush menu and select the arm now. So when I click and drag it draws or inserts an arm. So I'll rotate these and place them using the transpose lines. I'll just use the move brush to countersink those parts of the arms that we don't need into the, uh, the volume. And I'll use the transpose move line just to stretch the arms a bit by clicking and dragging in that last circle. That last circle will, will stretch if I click and drag in there. Clear the mask and then 
I'll go ahead and mask the body out again. I'm going to go to the deformation menu. I'm going to use inflate, the inflate slider with a negative value here to make the arms more slender. You'll see that the fingers actually get shrunk as well, so I'll mask the hand out and then I'll use the inflate slider again with a negative value just to make the arms more spindly. Now clear the mask and then dynamesh. Oh, I'll just undo that because I've got these points on the back I forgot to countersink. So we'll push those inside the model and adjust the, the flow of the arm back towards the scapula now and make that armpit deep. And now we'll Dynamesh. Now at this stage I'm just going to use the Move Brush once the Dynamesh is completed, just to make a few little adjustments using Move and Transpose to smooth back parts of the, uh, the facets in the arms here using the Smooth Brush. And just taking a look at the character through uh, 360 degrees. Going to mask out everything but the torso or the uh, the waist and the pelvis here, and we'll stretch this down a little bit using the transpose line because I want more grace in the figure. I want it to have a longer waist, and I'll continue making edits like this. I'm going to go ahead and let you watch this process, and then I'll come back when uh, when we're doing another specific action that I want to talk about. But for the most part, right now we're just using the move and standard brushes just to sort of adjust the shapes. Uh, and using transpose as well, just to make sure that the shapes all relate in um, in, a, in a in a nice way between each other. Now at this stage I'm going to mask out the head and I'm going to use transpose scale to change the relationship of the scale between the head and the body. I'm going to scale the body or uh, to uh, change the relationship there so that the uh, if I scale the body down the head's going to feel quite larger. And I'm also going to transpose shift the body down again. And then I'll use a transpose rotate line here just to adjust the angle there between the neck and the head and the body just to give it a little bit more um, of a graceful curve.
At this stage, I want to start to suggest or start to create the pectoralis muscles, some of the muscles that uh, should be on the figure. So I'll do that by going to the brush menu and selecting the curve tube brush. And the curve tube brush is going to allow me to draw uh, tubes of clay onto the surface of the model and then incorporate those together using Dynamesh. Uh, this is curve tube snap, which will snap to the surface. So if I click and drag, it's going to draw a um, a tube of clay. And if I go to the, the stroke menu here and turn on size, what that'll do is it'll taper that tube. So if I draw it, you see it creates a tapered tube, which has a kind of a muscle form to it. So I'm going to turn down my draw size a little bit here so I can make a um, make a smaller uh, or a, make a smaller tube. There we go. Now I can actually move this curve around. So you can see I can grab the endpoints, and it's going to adjust which end it tapers towards, depending on which endpoint I click. And then using the smooth brush, I'll smooth some of this back, and then continue to shift that curve around. You can see I'm basically using this this tapered tube to create. Uh, one of the heads of the pectoralis muscle that's attaching from the sternum toward the humerus bone, or onto the humerus bone. Just using the move brush to shift this volume around before I incorporate it into the main body using Dynamesh. happy, I will clear the mask and then control click and drag and then it'll dynamesh those tubes, those clay tubes, into the um, into the main body mesh. So these are actually, uh, these, these tubes are a really fantastic tool for laying in muscle forms, creating things like horns and spikes and other sorts of, of, of shapes on the surface of the character. We're going to use these extensively for this particular sculpture. Just going to be smoothing back a bit more here. And again, we'll lay in another uh, muscle here using the uh, um, the curve tube brush. Just click and drag, and it draws that curve. And then I can adjust the curve itself just by clicking and dragging while my cursor is blue. And I can move the endpoints. And remember that it will widen towards whatever the last endpoint is that you touched, or if you touch along the length of the curve. And that's only why you have size turned on over there on the right side of the screen. If you have size on under the brush, st under the stroke menu, it'll have that impact. So if I turn size off now, I can shift things around, and you see what happens is it, it takes away the tapering. Now if I turn size back on, click one end, it'll taper towards the opposite. And I'm continuing to use the uh, curve tube brush just to lay uh, uh, muscle forms extending from the humerus towards the back. And we're sort of, sort of basing these on um, the infraspinatus muscles and the teres major and the minor, but we're taking some artistic license here. Uh, I'm just trying to create some interesting shapes 
uh, breaking up the silhouette in interesting ways, and experimenting with the idea of having some negative space right now between the muscle forms, which is pretty interesting. It's almost as if it's got uh, parts of uh, exoskeleton and then soft muscle tissue that's extending out from beneath that exoskeleton. And at this stage, it's not necessarily something that'll carry through to the final design, but I'm enjoying playing with these curved tube brushes and seeing what types of shapes I can make happen.
Now at this stage I'm going to start using those curved two brushes to just lay some interesting surface uh, accents on. And I'm going to use the size modifier again so these will taper. And these are really just trying to create some sort of visual interest on the surface. Um, things that will support further sculpting later on down the line. Uh, I just like the idea of there being these um, sort of uh, um, rough uh, exoskeletal ridges along the uh, the torso of the character here, creating these interesting shapes that flow along the same line as the ribs. And for each one of these strokes that I draw, it will mask the previous one, and then once I clear the mask and execute a DynaMesh, it will incorporate all of these pieces into the mesh. You'll see here in just a moment. I'm going to draw some down the back. Remember, you can click and drag the endpoints to change the position of each stroke after you execute the stroke. And I'll build up quite a few strokes along the neck to suggest uh, some arteries and cordage and mus muscular form uh, radiating up from the shoulder girdle to the skull. We're adding further chords and uh, details using these strokes to the neck. I'm just clicking and dragging uh, the length of the curve to adjust the flow of each stroke before we draw our next stroke. And we'll clear the mask and then control click and drag a second time to execute a dynamesh. Now it's taken all of those those tube strokes and blended them together into the mesh. So I can use the smooth brush now to sort of knock them back and smooth them into the surface. So that takes us about to the end of our first video. Let's go ahead and save our work and I will see you in the next 